Hey friends, today's video was supposed to be something else, but the devs dropped this nice article that does a deep dive into the Prismatic subclass. And honestly, based on the Vidoc alone, I overreacted compared to what it actually is. To me, this does not look very problematic in PvE, and honestly might be weaker than what we currently have, just barely so weaker. I think the strength in both PvE and PvP is going to hinge on what that exotic class item can do to fill in the missing gaps between what is available on these subclasses. It turns out none of the three classes have neutral invis on demand. Just doesn't happen there. And although I do think Hunter is the most upgraded of the three for PvP, that doesn't mean you can't do unique things. Like Titan has a mobility kit with Thruster and Frenzied Blade where you can run Dead Man's Tail, Lion Rampant, etc. and have even more movement options. You can even have Glacier Nade to launch yourself at the start of it. Warlock has Phoenix Dive and Blink at the same time, along with Lightning Surge. So there is a movement aspect to this for sure that I think is going to be great in PvP, but maybe not to the same power level of simply running Icarus Dash, Heat Rises, and a Well of Radiance. Time will tell, and as we see that exotic class item, and as we see what these fragments eventually do to stats and whatnot, you might see some hybrid builds start popping up here and there after the honeymoon period, but I think at the current strength of Dawnblade and Bubble Titan, etc., it might not be as popular as you think at a high level. So with all that being said, uh, we'll move on to the video I had planned for today. I will do a deep dive into exactly what I want to run later, so it'll be a second video. Take care. Hey friends, today's video is a thought piece on my experience with PvE overall in Destiny 2, as well as a short response to my last video since, as usual, someone doesn't watch the video and then they angrily comment and then other people like it, even though they didn't watch the video either. So let's start off with critique is not the same as complaining. Critique is bringing conversation to anticipating future problems that could potentially halt overall replayability for the temporary high of the honeymoon period. Bungie seems to loaded the table with candy, and while that might seem good in the short term, we might soon have an upset stomach for lack of proper balance of veggies, carbs, and protein present in the game. Editor Cammy here, nah, that ain't gonna happen. Take the last video for example. I built up saying that because of the previous inability to balance around well and strand titan, that the new additions effectively will be a W regardless of how they pan out. And I quote, Chrism will be a W. For those busy typing an unrelated comment. I don't think this qualifies as complaining. This is observing and considering the results of both failure and success. Prism is a W. Editor Cammy wants to say that even though I read that article, Prism is still a W. But that's not what this video is about. I want to reestablish my PvE cred for the comment section again. Yeah, that comment section in the last video was pretty much all or nothing and didn't like the fact that people play PvP and can also be good at PvE. Some of y'all might have forgot, and there are others who are new to Destiny 2 and my channel. So hi, I play the whole game because I have to in order to get the most out of the PvP experience. Listen carefully. Just because I like PvP doesn't mean I automatically hate PvE. Such a reminder of Twitter. To be specific, I hate boring, bad PvE activities that gatekeep the loot from places I would rather play instead. So history lesson, I played the game for the whole decade. Some of the haters who didn't watch the last video and angrily commented were probably still in elementary school back then when I started. So way, way, way back when, I started with PS01, which was Destiny's framework and DNA. Then I learned about RuneScape's obscure mechanics to complete quests at a lower combat level to get a PvP advantage. Funny enough, editor's note, I used to hybrid or tribrid a lot in RuneScape, where I used all three parts of the combat triangle to complete a combo to send them back to Lumbridge. Then I used that knowledge as my framework for approaching Destiny 1. The world building of Destiny 1 was incredible, but the combat content left a lot to be desired. The information community wasn't established then, so I had to trailblaze a lot for my friend group, which is primarily why I started a YouTube channel. For example, I had to debunk if loot was better for soloing Nightfalls early on, 
as well as stupid moments of curiosity like when I sacrificed 10 Plan C fusion rifles into Pocket Infinity to see if it would craft a better version of it. One day after a raid, since I did so much PvE back then, the fireteam leader just loaded up PvP, and although I was a very casual Halo player, I was a very practiced Battlefield player who ran no aim assist option on controller. So needless to say, it was evident from the start that there was a significant difference in skill between me and my PvE fire team. Even at the time, I didn't think highly of my skill. My raid team called me the Terminator and things like that because more often than not, I'd roll multiple players at once. And comments like that spurred me to camp in the Rumble playlist with high skill ceiling setups like Universal Remote, Snipe, Blink. Keep in mind at that time, Last Word could two tap, Thorn could two tap, Bellwinter's Lie could hit like 13 meters or something ridiculous like that. We were on low sense because we couldn't go over 10 and 30 FPS. It was a completely different game. So if you're gonna like make fun of that loadout, I guess that's okay. But I think it had a high skill ceiling. And over time, as I refine my play enough, I was eventually invited to grassroots scrims. And as I got better in that environment, I butted heads with those who wanted a less strict rule set. I wanted a more strict rule set so it could be more competitive, more fair, less RNG. And it just didn't make sense to me. The items that were banned and the items that were allowed, no sense. So I ended up playing less scrims and more pubs, and I got so bored rolling teams in pubs that I started to make arbitrary challenges for myself, like using only white weapons, etc. Pretty soon the goal wasn't to win or even to get better at the game, it was to force the stars to align for absurd clips to satiate my curiosity. There were no private matches at the time, so if you wanted to test something, you had to match your friend and rumble and hide in a corner of the map. Now here's where it goes full circle. I had to go back to PvE to obtain hyper-specific loot for PvP interactions. You should have seen my vaults at the time. I had like 40 zoom scout rifle, you had to crouch to get it or something like that with the private eye perk, a four round hand cannon with luck in the chamber, body shot snipers, infinite ammo fusions, illegal guns with double high impact reserves, etc. To obtain these, I had to become even more of a PvE sweat to speedrun activities. Jump cut to Destiny 2, you already know where this is going. Since PvE will never supply consistently difficult challenges, I know that in the short term, I will be very bored of it. So instead, I immediately choose to learn to play it efficiently to get my specific loot and get back into PvP as soon as possible. Y'all might see where I'm going with this, but I'm gonna throw a curveball. PvP is needed because PvE is not replayable from a mastery sense. But what if PvP didn't exist? Then Destiny could really flex its creative difficulty muscles without worrying that design choices would invalidate the entirety of PvP. However, this puts pressure on Bungie to exceed the PvE quality of other games in the same overlapping subgenres. This immediately puts Borderlands, World of Warcraft, Warframe, PSO, Diablo, Helldivers, etc. as real competition for the Destiny enthusiast. However, the reason these are incomparable at the moment is because Destiny PvE and PvP sandboxes are intertwined. That has always been the unique selling point of games like Destiny. Your PvE skill directly translates to your options in PvP. That was the initial draw of RuneScape for me. The difference is Destiny is a first person shooter with great gunplay at the cost of not having a trading system to incentivize full game mastery like it did for me with RuneScape. So honestly, this is the crux of the video here. I'm cool with either approach from Bungie. Number one, offer both PvE and PvP intertwined, but respect PvP foremost since that's where the replayability is most realistic. Or two, completely kill off PvP and go crazy in PvE. I wanna pause for effect there let what I just said sink in and delete your very angry comment. This might be the part where you realize we're on the same team here. I'm okay with either case. Both will be fun. Maybe most of y'all won't sweat PvE enough to get there, but trust that eventually you will run out of challenge, fun, and general replayability. Then it's on the devs to one-up themselves to get you back on the game. All that being said, great PvE can be developed. For example, I spent 2020 streaming more PSO2 Classic than I did Destiny 2 that year. For a pure PvE game, I felt more engaged and challenged than I did in Destiny PvP of that era. 
So it can be done. So with all that being said, you would understand that just because I like PvP doesn't mean I automatically hate PvE. To be clear, I dislike bad PvE and unfair RNG systems holding back the fun of both PvE and PvP. Maybe it is realistic for Bungie to maintain high quality experiences on both sides of the game. But if it's not, again, I'm on your team here, I'm cool with them going into either extreme, especially if they go the sequel route with Destiny 3 and beyond. Imagine a bona fide Destiny style MMO PvE game side by side a Destiny hero shooter, arena shooter. Spinfoil hat on. Before I read that article, I was convinced that Bungie was basically saying, just let everyone be as broken as they possibly can be. The game's dead anyway. Let them have the crafting. But since I read that article and it seems a lot more tame, I think Destiny 2 will stick around a little longer than y'all expect. Thanks for listening to the entire video, friends. I'm sure the top comment will be an implied I hate PvP sweats comment that completely misses the conversation and content in the video again. But whatever. I appreciate the real ones. I will see y'all in the next. Well, I just sat here and edited this entire video, and I didn't mention one of the most recent PvE accolades I got. We killed Contest Crota on free-to-play accounts. Let that sink in. I can edit that video for y'all's enjoyment if you want to see that this week.